America's tech billionaires want to build a new city, and they want to build it here. This is Solano County, and it sits on the northeastern edge of the San Francisco Bay Area. Right now, it looks like this. But some of the wealthiest venture capitalists and tech founders in the world are investing millions of dollars into making it look like this. It's a project called the East Solano Plan, more commonly referred to as California Forever. And it's being led by this guy. That's gonna make it possible for a uh, new generation of Californians to realize the California dream. Uh, the way that prior generations have been able to do it. As someone who's lived in California for 30 plus years, he's got my attention. Because despite the fact that hundreds of thousands of people left the state during the pandemic, we're still short about 2 million housing units and need to build 3.5 million in less than a year. That's a problem that California Forever says it wants to help alleviate, if it can get past this. Are you for or against California Forever? What's my little sticker say? No, <laughs> no in California forever. Why? Why? So there's a bunch of reasons. This story is rapidly developing, so I knew I had to go straight to the source. I started in the heart of Silicon Valley, got some lunch, then continued my journey north to Solano County, where I interviewed anyone who would talk to me about California forever. What are your thoughts on this new city? People would be living there would be lab rats. I think it's a great idea, but I'll be dead before it happens, so. I also interviewed the journalist who uncovered the names of the project's investors. There's the kind of long narrative version of this, and then there's the kind of short, easy version. It took a couple weeks to put all the pieces together, but I think I finally understand why these tech billionaires want to build a new city here. And it has less to do with the California housing crisis than I thought. Okay, so I'm in San Jose, California, and I'm about to head north on I-280 towards San Francisco. From there, I will head northeast to Solano County. So yeah, it's a little bit of a journey. Let's kill some time in the car by talking about the history of the California Forever Project, which started in a really bizarre way. In 2018, an unknown organization contacted nearly every landowner in East Solano County, offering to buy their land, even if it wasn't for sale. The offers were several times the market rate, and no one could figure out who was making them, not even the US government. Fast forward five years, and the mystery buyer is identified as Flannery Associates LLC, whose parent company is California Forever, and CEO is Jan Schrammick. Okay, a few things to know about this guy. One, he's Czech. Two, he became a trader for Goldman Sachs at the ripe old age of 22 years old. And three, he spent about five years working on failed startups over in Europe before finally moving to California in 2015. Shramik had this vision to build a walkable and fully sustainable city halfway between San Francisco and Sacramento. But he needed money. So he did what any founder would do. He pitched to investors, big ones. Billionaires like Reid Hoffman, who founded LinkedIn, and the Collison brothers, who co-founded Stripe. One of the journalists who broke this story was Connor Doherty of the New York Times. Not only do the people who are invested in this want to make money on this, there are actual VC firms. So if you think about that, that means they have invested someone else's money. So that alone tells you how they're thinking about this. So far, Flannery and its backers have shelled out roughly $900 million to acquire 60,000 acres of land between the town of Rio Vista and the Travis Air Force Base. It plans to transform that land into neighborhoods, parks, restaurants, and a solar farm to power the entire city. But those are just perks compared to the real incentive to live in California Forever's slice of Solano County. The San Francisco Bay Area is one of the most expensive places to live in the U.S. I should know. I lived here for three years. Buying or renting a home in San Francisco is 190% more expensive than the national average. And just 16% of Californians can afford to buy a home anywhere in the state, which may be why nearly 1 million of us decided to leave the state between 2021 and 2022 for places like Texas. It's this massive issue that Silicon Valley has already tried to solve, even though they kind of created the problem. 
Back in 2019, some of the biggest tech companies pledged billions to help address California's housing crisis. But when Silicon Valley became Silicon Valley, thousands of people relocated to the Bay Area for tech jobs that paid really well. And that spike in population also spiked the price of housing. And the cost of building a home increased too, which discouraged developers from, well, developing. And now there's an entirely new conversation about how the explosion of AI will impact housing here in the Bay Area. Honestly, that's a whole other video, but long story short, it's not looking so good. If California Forever's East Solano plan succeeds, it could build as many as 160,000 affordable homes for nearly half a million residents. We made it to Rio Vista, California. I am literally standing on Flannery Road. And yes, that is where Flannery Associates got its name. So this is part of the proposed building site for California Forever. It's pretty dead, as you can see, but I have a feeling there are some people who want to keep it that way. Let's go find out. You've been out there. You know what the land is like. I know what it's like. Yeah, I mean, Do you think this is possible? Uh, sure, it looks possible, but is it right? Would you want to work there and live there? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, housing, that's pretty expensive, right? Why do you think the tech founders want to build it here in Solano County? We're an untouched jewel. <laughs> There's a lot to be had here. So I think all of their fancy AI and uh, all their talk about guarantees and all that kind of stuff, I think it's all smoke and mirrors. This is Dwayne Crum, a member of the Solano Together Coalition. They're a group of concerned residents, leaders, and organizations driven by an alternative vision for Solano County, AKA the opposition to California forever. On its website, the group claims that Flannery Associates' new city does not help solve California's housing crisis. They also claimed that 70% of Solano County voters would vote no on the East Solano Plan initiative. But then it received over 20,000 voter signatures, which is 60% more than it needed to make the 2024 ballot. No, the signatures don't worry me at all, actually. I mean, there's all kinds of wacky stories if you go out and look, you know, if you do YouTube. You know, if you go, look, go out and look on social media, you'll find lots of people talking about the signature gatherers making these bizarre pitches about why people should sign the initiative. Something that California Forever came back and disputed as misinformation. And it gets even more intense. Flannery filed a lawsuit in 2023 alleging dozens of Solano landowners colluded to artificially raise prices. Now it's seeking $510 million in damages. How do you feel about the lawsuit? Oh God, it, um, um, that's the one that I come close to tears on. Because you know, I know some of these folks, I know them well, They're, and it's what, what Flannery is trying to do is literally trying to break these people. And the odds are they will, because a lawsuit that, that a family, a family farm, that's looking at a million plus in legal fees, it just makes me very angry. So yeah, this whole thing is getting pretty messy. And my guess is that Jan Tromek expected that. He also knew when he bought the land that it wasn't zoned for residential use and that it would be up to the voters of Solano County to change that. So then why would he, along with his team of billionaire backers, buy it anyway and build California forever here? Before we go any further, I should mention that I did reach out to California forever and never heard back. But after my trip to Solano County, a lot of research and a few interviews later, I think I finally have the answer. Okay, so there's one very major player in the California Forever story that hasn't been identified yet. And that's this guy, Michael Moritz. He's the former chairperson of Sequoia Capital, one of the wealthiest VC firms in the world. Like Jan Schrammick, he's also a transplant from Europe and one of California Forever's first investors. Moritz wrote a letter back in 2017 to a prospective backer of the project. In it, he estimated that investors could make 10 times their money even if they just got the land rezoned, and far more if and when it was developed. That New York Times article had, a, I thought, a pretty telling quote that we have a chance to make a spectacular profit. I mean, that's, that's why they're here. Think about it this way. You know, there's this 
original, you know, land families that owned like California back when they bought it as ranch land. And of course, many of them still have it. But I mean, some of those people turned out to be like some of the richest people around. The returns are sort of like generational. They're multi-generational. Their kids' kids will be sitting on land that they can still get a ton of money out of all these years from now, which is how cities work, right? And speaking of how cities work, what the California housing crisis really comes down to is how hard it is to build affordable homes in the cities that already exist. For example, San Francisco. That's one of the reasons why California Forever wants to build everything from scratch. The other reason is textbook Silicon Valley thinking. I think that they want to make money. But I also think that they believe that if they can demonstrate that you can make money building a different kind of development, one that's more bike friendly, more transit friendly, more walkable, then that idea will start to get replicated in a lot of different places and it will change how people live. That's what I think they tell themselves. Other billionaires are doing something similar, but bigger and more futuristic, like Telosa, the desert city utopia being built by Mark Laurie, the ex-CEO of Walmart, or the Seasteading Institute, a floating cities concept backed by serial investor Peter Thiel. Jan Schrammick isn't trying to reinvent the wheel when it comes to building his California Forever vision. If anything, he's going back to the way that cities used to be built. And that's why this could actually work, if he can get the rest of Solano County on board. I don't expect they're gonna go away. So I expect that after November, I think we have to kick them hard, but that after November, what I expect and hope is that they would have a, a, a meaningful, open conversation with the community. As for the investors, they could see a tenfold return in as little as a few decades. Yeah, that ROI is gonna take a while. But when your net worth is $6 billion, maybe that's not such a big deal. If you like this video, subscribe for more content from The Hustle and get the latest business and tech news over at thehustle.co.